Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Ann Reardon and today we're making a giant Twix bar and at the end we'll be giving it away to an amazing young lady so make sure you hang around to meet her as well. But firstly to make it we need to make two long rectangle boxes out of some thick cardboard and then we want to make a rounded base so we're going to insert an extra piece of cardboard into each one. Then staple them into place and line it with some non-stick baking paper. Now I have made a bit of a mistake here. I've just lined it to the length of it, but I suggest you make it longer to cover the sides all in one piece instead of in a separate piece because my caramel leaked around the back of that curve there. To make the biscuit, you'll need some flour, water, butter, egg yolks, sugar, skim milk powder and salt and all of the recipe quantities are on the website howtocookthat.net. Place your butter and sugar into the bowl of an electric mixer and beat it on low speed until it's smooth. We don't want to over whip it up, we're not wanting to add lots of air because we don't want it to spread out or rise up, we just want a low crisp biscuit. Then add the salt and the egg yolks and continue to mix that on low until it's well combined. Then add in your skim milk powder and the water and mix it again. Once it's all evenly incorporated, swap over from your scraper mixer to your dough hook and then add the flour. If you don't have a dough hook, you can mix the flour in by hand, that's totally fine. Place the mixture between two sheets of baking paper and spread it out until it's big enough to make at least four biscuits. And to get it thick enough, we're gonna to need to use two biscuits, so a double layer, and we can't just bake it double the thickness because then it doesn't go crisp, it just goes cakey. So we're gonna bake it thinner and put two of them in. Bake it in the oven for around 20 minutes, then take it out and immediately cut it into lengths that will fit into your box. Spread them out and put them back in the oven. Just turn the oven off and leave them in there to dry out. To make the caramel, place the sugar, milk, cream and the glucose syrup into a pan. Now you can use light corn syrup here instead of the glucose syrup if you can't get glucose syrup where you are. And then stir it over the heat for several minutes until the sugar dissolves and the mixture starts to boil. Add a candy thermometer to the side of your pan and let it bubble away until it reaches about 240 degrees F or 115 C. Now for those of you without a thermometer who are trying to guess when it's ready, at 224 degrees F, if you take a spoonful out and put it on a cold surface, it looks like this. It's a thick, smooth liquid. At 235, it's looking like this. It's starting to get thicker and it's making strings if you lift it up with a spoon. And at 240, which is what we want, it's thicker again and it's starting to set on the countertop. As soon as it reaches 240, take it off the heat and pour it into your mould. Now this is where I was saying I lost some of my caramel going around the edges of the curve. So if you've just got that one piece of baking paper there, that should solve that problem. While the caramel is still hot, add in one biscuit, then some extra caramel and a second biscuit on top of that. Let that cool down completely and then pour either tempered chocolate or you could use fake or compound chocolate over the top. If you have no idea what I'm talking about with types of chocolate, there is a video explaining that on the channel. Just click on how to cook that under this to go to the channel and look in the chocolate playlist. Tap the mold on the bench to let the chocolate run down the gaps and the edges and then let that set completely. Rip open your mold and take out the body of your Twix and then balance it on two cups. Then take a ladle and smother it from one end to the other in more tempered chocolate. Use a spoon to drizzle a pattern of extra chocolate across the top just like the bars have and then repeat that for the second bar and then you need to allow them to set. To wrap them, place the Twix upside down on your paper, then place a piece of cardboard that you've covered in baking paper on the top, and then use glue to secure the paper into place on the back, and then flip it over. At the ends, push the sides in, and then flatten the paper down. Open it up, add glue, and then refold it along the lines you've already made. Cut off the extra paper using zigzag shaped scissors, and then use the back of a knife to push indents into the paper along the join and then print out a logo and stick that on. Now who should we give this giant Twix to? 
In Fiji there are a large number of children who are born every year who are profoundly deaf and without treatment the future for those children is very bleak. I have here with me today an amazing young woman who is profoundly deaf herself but with the aid of lots of therapy, lots of hard work and with a hearing aid now as well she can speak normally and she can hear fairly well with the hearing aid as well and she is helping those children. So Virginia, why are you so passionate about working with deaf kids? Um, it's funny, I wasn't, I actually wasn't when I was younger, it wasn't something that I was passionate about at all and um, mum had started working in Fiji and I was at university at the time studying forensic psychology and thought I'd go for a holiday. So I went over to Fiji and I met a man who was 30 and he had the same hearing loss as I do, sort of when you lay our audiograms over each other it was an identical loss. Um, and this guy was absolutely not able to speak, um, had never had hearing aids in his life, was signing with, to me and um, my sign wasn't great at the time so we had a very sort of jarred conversation um, and he was asking me these questions, you know, oh, you're at university and your friends, are they deaf or are you half deaf? Like, what, are you deaf? Are you half deaf? And I'm going, no, no, you know, it's the same, it's the same and then... Um, He's you know, asking me, do you go and shop for yourself? Do you, you know, all these mm. things. And it was a really embarrassing conversation for me to have. Mm. And I remember looking at some of the little kids that were there and just thinking, well, that's, that's kind of the trajectory of what happens without what I had access to here in Australia. And so I think at that time I just couldn't shake it and I came back back to Australia from Fiji and changed my degree and enrolled in speech pathology and, and sort of just from there I've, I've been up to my eyeballs in it. So, and yeah. So you enrolled in speech pathology, how does that work? How did the university react to that, someone with profound hearing loss doing speech pathology? Yeah, look, it was, it was, it was a challenge initially. <laughs> um, I was approached and, and sort of asked, you know, did I think I was going to be able to get through the degree? So much of what you do as a speech pathologist involves the ability to listen and discriminate mm. small sounds. Um, and I understood the concern and, you know, I sort of thought, well, look, come back to me in a year and if you still don't like how I'm doing, then I'll leave. And I ended up doing quite well and, and graduating with really good marks. And, and what, what exactly do you and the Carabas Alliance do when you go to Fiji? Okay, so we go over with a team of people that's always changing. We have um, surgeons, we have audiologists, speech pathologists. We recently started taking occupational therapists, um, teachers of the deaf, auditory verbal therapists. We all go over and we're working with local organisations to upskill those organisations, mm -hmm. upskill their local staff. And with them, we're working in early intervention settings and providing hearing aids, so the diagnosis of hearing loss, what type of hearing loss, how severe, all of those things. Um, we provide hearing aids free of charge, which Phonak have very generously donated to the Caribou's Alliance. Um, and they're amazing hearing aids, like state-of-the-art hearing aids. So yeah, we, we provide those to the families for free and then we do the rehabilitation process with them. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, That's it's, been, it's fun. I enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Yeah. It's so good. Well, to say thank you for everything you're doing, we've got a little donation for you to help you on your next trip to Fiji. Oh, thank you. And we also have a giant... Twigs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is amazing. It's so heavy. <laughs> that is amazing. Two kilos of twigs. So. Wow. Yeah, wow. Oh, that's incredible. Look at that. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> oh, wow. Like mm. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> that's amazing. Tastes like a twix. Like it <laughs> tastes like a twix. With all the good bits, I really like the caramel. That's amazing. Wow, thank you. If you'd like to find out more or if you would like to help the Carabas Alliance, you can go to their YouTube channel or their website. I'll put a link to both of those in the description below. Subscribe to How to Cook That for more amazing cakes, chocolates and desserts. Click here to go to the channel, here for last week's video and here to go to the website. Have a great week and I'll see you on Friday.